A1. Uh, it's February 12th, and he's just in the last portion of his pre-training, he's learning how to bake. He had a hard time. You can still see him swing his trunk first before he does it, but now we are waiting, and it's at least one second before uh, we let him go. That's the usual setup, and the pre-turning is usually done with either Dana or myself. Again, he's swinging it. That's the way he always did it, but at least now he's able to settle. Next, an example of our session number nine. This is session nine. This is A. Dui Mung. It's February 21st, and we're ready to go. This is Scarecrow Person. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, now we have fans. They're black fans. They're not the old-fashioned ones that we had before. And he is going to the one that can't see him. Okay, third round here. Okay. We're ready to go. Much better this time. Okay, now here we go with the bamboo wall. And they're ready to go. Go! Okay. And that was an easy one to choose from. Okay. Here we go. We're going to do black fans again. Okay. And the wrong one again. You want to be next time. Here. I'm ready. Here we go. 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 Okay. Okay. Last time. Go. Okay. Oh, that was much better. Ah, that was much better. Okay, now this one is the guys each okay. have on one of my two rings. One is an elephant ring. It's got the elephant hair from Momo A from Cheshire. The other one is my amethyst ring. And they've just switched rings. And whoever has on the uh, elephant Momo A ring, the elephant tail ring, is the one that is... Um, the correct one. Okay. And we're doing this to, is a, a, a way to tell that everything is kosher. Because there's no way, no matter how smart the elephant is, it's going to figure this out. And here's the rings, just so we can uh, have an idea of what we're talking about. The, the elephant ring, obviously, is the one on the top. Okay? Okay, here comes the old scarecrow again. Not looking his best, he got attacked the other night brutally by one of the elephants trying to get the food out of his pocket. This one is, depending on which hand, or which ear your hand is covering, is the one that the elephant is supposed to choose. Now we're going to do another one of the ear ones. These are controls to make sure that we're not giving any unconscious signals to the elephants Back. to help them decide which one to choose from. Um, that's not the end of session nine. There's still some more to go, but they're all repeats of what I've already shown, so we're going to conclude the tape. Alrighty. We may note in passing that the performance of our elephants in this task, 69% correct, was roughly equal to that of our chimpanzees, 67%. This means that both species, in about 30% of the trials, begged from a person who could not see them. Here is just one brief example from Beauty, our star performer at the Detroit Zoo. Note that she is facing a person who can see her begging gesture and goes out of her way to beg from a person who can't see her at all. This is Beauty again. This is the last one, and it's buckets, and we're ready to go whenever you are.
câu Ok, ok Detroit Zoo and the jungles of Burma because we love elephants and we're curious about them. We were fortunate enough to gather some new information about their vision, olfaction, short-term memory, learning abilities, and behavior. But we failed to come up with an unequivocal answer to the question which was uppermost in our minds and which constitutes in our view the fundamental question of both animal behavior and comparative psychology. That is, are animals conscious? Is our Leela conscious? <laughs> are elephants, for instance, to paraphrase Colin Allen, big zombies walking about without any awareness? Or are they, as Joyce Poole believes, after decades of closely observing them in the wild, nearly as aware as human beings are? Can they think or solve problems in their head? Do they understand anything? Are they aware of their own selves and of the selves of others? Are they capable of empathy, compassion, or deliberate cruelty? Once resolved, the answer to these questions will forever alter our view of elephants and perhaps also our conception of all other animals, ourselves included. When Mauti and I started our adventures with elephants, we took their consciousness for granted and hoped to come up with an unequivocal experimental evidence in its favor. Instead, although the meager evidence we have gathered so far is only suggestive and circumstantial, and although it does not rule out consciousness, to Moti, this evidence appears more consistent with the odd view that elephants do not think. I, on the other hand, feel that there is enough of an anecdotal and field evidence to support the view that elephants are conscious. In a few years, we hope we shall have a more definite answer. For now, we just want to end this film by saying that we are profoundly touched by our brief sojourn with elephants and that we shall be forever grateful to the people and the institutions who made this sojourn possible. Thank you too for joining us.